Okay, so welcome to this webinar today on easily creating leads and turning them into paying customers. I am Hayley Barrett. I am a digital business advisor with Business Station. Uh, just a bit of uh, welcome to who Business Station are. So we provide a variety of business programs that are tailored towards small businesses and entrepreneurs. We operate in Queensland, Northern Territory and WA. Uh, currently, we are running this program, the Digital Solutions Program, which is funded through the federal government, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more about towards the end. Uh, but what this does, it enables us to run these workshops for you know, people starting up businesses, people looking to build their digital capacity, entrepreneurs, anyone who's basically going into the online space uh, to access these workshops on a regular basis. It also provides uh, one-to-one -one mentoring and advice as well on anything to do with digital. So that's a little bit about Business Station. Myself, Hayley, uh, I have been working in this space for a long time. I don't know exactly the number of years, but it feels like a very long time. Uh, working right across the digital landscape itself, uh, but with a particular interest and love in branding web design and storytelling. And this is uh, what I want to be sharing with you today, is how we can use these different aspects of these three things to really uh, connect with our audiences, basically, and turn them into to paying customers. And there's a little bit of a process behind it, which is a, uh, not so much, I'm not really going to be talking too much about the technical side of it today. I really want to talk about how to build that rapport and that level of connection with your would-be customers. I just want to make sure I've got the chat box up here. Please um, feel free to jump into the chat at any time, ask any questions that you have. If you want me to expand on anything that I'm talking about, when we get towards the end, we'll have more of a Q&A session as well. Um, and if there's, as I said, I'm not so much talking about the technical side of things, but if there is anything technical that you want me to touch on, let me know and I will. Let's see if this will click through. All right. So when we're talking about creating leads and turning them into paying customers, I really want to, I personally want to remove words like customer, client, um, users, uh, talking, referring to people that engage with us online are often referred to as users. Um, and these are just really impersonal terms. I want to get back to who we are at our core. We're all people. When we do business with people, we're doing business with people. We're not doing business with users. We're not you know, doing business with customers per se, even though they are, they're transacting with us. At the end of the day, they're people. And the way that we connect online with people is remembering this very, very simple fact. Social media, uh, websites, digital technologies, they're, they've been fantastic in bridging this gap between uh, you know, small businesses being able to compete on a global level, basically. And they've given us access to you know, so many more people than we would have in our, just our local realm. But what it has done to a degree has depersonalised in, in a sense, uh, but also made it really, you know, it's felt like the last, I'm going to say maybe five years, it feels like it's a constant guessing game of trying to figure out how to use these technologies and how to win on these technologies. And I feel like we've forgotten the, the main point of what these are. Social media is social, you know, it's about being social, it's about connecting with people. And if we can go right back to that basic point and remember that with everything that we're doing, I think it will make how we show up online so much easier. We just remembering that we're talking to people and connecting with people. So after I said that I want to remove these words, I've now gone and added this very word here, consumers. Uh, but it is a really good point as well. I will make sure I change that for the next time I present this. But yeah, people are seeking trustworthy brands. This is another important thing as well. So when we're engaging with brands online or in person, it doesn't really matter 
if it's in real life or in the online space. Uh, we want to ensure that we connect, that we're dealing with trustworthy brands. You know, brands that stand for something, brands that represent something more than just taking the dollar. And you see, especially with the last two years, with um, all that's happened, and I don't need to refer to that. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Uh, there has been, there's definitely been a movement that started long before uh, the last two years, but it's definitely ramped up in that time period. People going back to grassroots businesses and wanting to to engage and purchase from businesses that actually stand for something that are perhaps you know, the mum and dad on the ground, you know, working to build something that has is a sustainable business model or leaving a legacy or creating something that means more than just dollars in the bank, essentially. And that has definitely elevated, I keep using the word definitely, that must be my word of the day. Uh, it has elevated in the last two years and I am confident that we will continue seeing people more and more engaging with brands that are stand that represent something. So what does that mean for how you uh, speak with these people, how you connect with people online? So what we need to look at is creating authentic and engaging stories that provide value to our customers, to our people that want to do business with us. Uh, now that not so much going to get into how you craft these stories because this is going to be dependent upon how much you're you know comfortable in sharing and creating. But if you can remember that if we're creating brands that mean something, that stand for something, then creating stories around our brand, around what that what they represent, is going to connect far better with your the, your customers. Can't think of a better word right now than that. And when we do this, and I will get into more detail about this down the track, I'm just in, inviting you into what I'm talking about today. So when we do this, when we create these engaging and authentic stories, when we're posting things that mean something that matter, uh, what we do, rather than the traditional way of talking to people, which was what we consider push marketing or push advertising, where you know, you'd be familiar with TV ads, radio ads, even display ads that pop up in your, your Facebook and Google and YouTube and things like that. Rather than be invasive in the way that we're trying to connect with people, what we end up doing is we pull them into our ecosystem. We provide enough value that it makes these people want to engage with us, want to connect with us, want more from us. And that's essentially what we're trying to achieve is that we want them to want to have like that ongoing relationship with us. And when we do storytelling effectively, what it does is it positions brands and businesses as thought leaders. Now, we probably don't all want to be thought leaders. Now, that's a lot of pressure. Uh, yes, we might be, you know, standing for something, creating something that is of value and meaning for perhaps your family or your community or something like that, but it doesn't necessarily mean you want to be out there on a speakerphone, you know, being the voice of the, of the moment. But what it does mean is it does allow you to position yourself in a way that is of a position of influence and that it doesn't matter uh, and I want to actually go back to the word influence. Influencer marketing has uh, grown also in recent times uh, and I think as a result of that it has some negative connotations where people think of influencers as someone with you know lots and lots of followers uh, you know maybe a, that uh, might be famous well known whatever that's not necessarily what we're talking about here. Uh, as an influencer, you don't need to be, you know, have six million followers. It could just be as people within your industry, within your niche, within your community, turn to you, turn to your brand for your ideas, for your inspiration. And I'll show you how we can apply that to different businesses. Okay. Okay. 
just want to speak to it to help stop sucking thoughts in your head and how you can use this for your business. So when we do all of this, when we do this well, when we do it right, what it does is it builds loyalty and brand advocacy. Now at the end of the day, once we have people within our ecosystem or engaged with our business, we know that we've developed a level of Bear with me one moment. Can you hear me now? Okay, so let's go back a slide just so uh, we can get our bearings here. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're talking about becoming an influencer in for your industry, for your, your niche, your community, that kind of thing. And so doing what it does is builds that brand loyalty and brand advocates, which, as we were talking about, is uh, when people know you and they like you and they trust you, it's so much easier to continually engage them, uh, to turn to convert them to their their business as, as such uh, as opposed to if we're constantly trying to reach new customers all the time and as these people the other beauty of this as well is when we build that brand loyalty with people they become our advocates uh, and what that means is they are happy to tell other people about you you know but, and they do, and they get really excited because they they feel like they're a part of a brand that represents something of meaning and they want to share it with the world. And even if it's not meaning, even if it's just that, you know, you provide such wonderful customer service every time they deal with you, maybe you have really great, compelling email content that just makes their day that little bit brighter. All of these different things, you know, that they want to share with other people. So we need to think about that, how what we create online, how we show up online, how that will help build those brand advocates for us. I just have to move my... All right, so do you know that people actually consult almost 15 pieces of content before they make a buying decision. So this is one of the reasons that storytelling is so vital to anything that you do online. Uh, because building that trust and that rapport, that kind of thing, it takes a little bit of time, takes a little bit of uh, momentum as well, getting people involved with your brand, your business. So 15 pieces of content is quite a lot, seems a lot, but I don't want to make it daunting for you. I want it just to be there as a matter of, okay, how is, how is that going to apply to me as I start creating content? And one of the things that I also want to reiterate here is uh, this storytelling online, you know, creating content all the time. We work with people in this space on a regular basis right across Australia. And it's a uh, a bone of contention for most business owners because most business owners aren't content creators, they're not storytellers, they're business owners. You know, they have a skill or they have a passion or something that they've created this business out of and that's what they're there to do is to, you know, run the business essentially or grow the business. So it's, and then we see all these people online who seem to grow followings, you know, and seem to just have, like, it looks like, online they've just got all these people just you know loving them and they're creating this content that just seems so easy for them and they're like i don't know how to do this like you know and that's a problem that we have often it is how we can overcome this as business owners but if you're going to show up online this is the thing that i want to make clear if you're going to show up online storytelling is a huge part of that and the businesses or the brands that do it well is because they've grasped it and they've incorporated it into their into their day. Now, whether it's themselves, and there's lots of people um, who do, 
uh, they, you know, they're constantly creating content that, that, as the business owner. Some people employ staff to do it, uh, contractors or whatever. But if you're going to be online, this is something that you can't get away from. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to be on 1,500 different channels and you have to be thinking about what you're going to post on Facebook at 9 o'clock at night. I want to remove that kind of thinking. I want to get really streamlined for you. You know, we're not just talking about creating stories here. We make, want to make it really, really targeted. We want to make sure that if we're going to be doing it ourselves, that we make it, it's got to be fun. It's got to be an extension of ourselves. Um, and it needs to be incorporated into our day. It can't be an afterthought. But that's okay. I'll show you how you can make this happen. All right, so we've already said this, that you know people want content that adds value, provides that thought leadership, and clearly states a brand's moral position. Now, this is another thing with so many movements going on as well. You know, uh, there's so much out there. The people are connecting with brands that actually stand for something, and I have repeated that over and over again. Um, but it's really, really clear. This is how you niche down with your community as well. You know, so we're not really, even though we can provide a service or a product or whatever for everyone out there, we're not really talking to everyone, and especially online, we're not talking to everyone. We're really niching down with a particular community of people who will, who do know, like, and love us, or perhaps they don't know, like, and love us yet, but they know, like, and love what we're, the cause that we're about, or the, um, the impetus behind this type of business, what, how it started. So they're believing that. Okay, uh, a really good example of this. Uh, okay, well I've just jumped to to this next slide, but before I talk about this brand, uh, I want to give a really recent example. Uh, oops, I'm clicking all over the place. Okay, so yesterday, as we know, and I don't want to get into the politics of this because that's not what I'm here to do. Uh, but yesterday was Australia Day, 26th of Australia of January. Uh, now, this day has different meanings for different people, and one of the things that a lot of businesses have, have been doing, which you'll see, is have decided that they're no longer willing to support that day. Uh, so, in so doing, they continue to open that day, uh, they've built it into their work policies, their workplace policies, uh, that they continue to not recognise that day as a day of celebration. Now, this may or may not resonate with your business, with your brand. That's not the, the point uh, that I'm making here. It's just is that it's something that is meaningful to you. Uh, and the reasons behind it is for you. And incorporating that and making a sense of around that connects you with a community of people who will respect that, who resonate with that. Oh, we've got sound going again. How about now? Is it okay? Thanks for letting me know. I've got this giant camera here that every time I lean closer to the microphone, I just... And now I've got this microphone that doesn't ever work. What if I hold it up here? Can you hear me okay now? Uh, so you can see, like, you can see that by standing and standing behind this uh, statement that means something to them, they're connecting with people who are more likely to to resonate with that message and would be more likely to do business with them as a result of that. So that's just a really brief example. Uh, and anyone who was on social media yesterday would very Brand declaring this. So it's a pretty big movement. So let's just look at some brands right now. We use storytelling, but you uh, incorporate impact and meaning into their business. Okay, so Patagonia is a clothing brand, outdoor clothing brand, uh, and their mantra is that we're in the business to save our home planet. And if you go 
to their website. I was going to show you, but since everything's playing up, I won't right now. Uh, but this is what they they stand for. So yeah, they sell outdoor clothing, but what they do is they've connected with a community of people who believe in this same cause, who are passionate about the outdoors, who are passionate about the environment, who are passionate about you know leaving no footprint basically. Uh, and then they have developed a whole suite of content around this very cause itself. This, you know, we're in the business to save our home planet. They've got impact stories that they share. Uh, any of their videos, you know, it's not just, hey, here's a jacket, that'll be great for you to keep the rain off you. Any video content they create is about how, you know, they're working hard to save the planet, to create a sustainable ecosystem, essentially. I know this because I buy their gear, because I love what they stand for. But I love their gear as well, and I love the outdoors. Uh, another example of another brand that does this well. I'm using more commonly known ones. There's a lot of other smaller businesses, grassroots businesses, that do exactly the same thing. You know, they've created a business that's based on something. And there's so many here in, um, in our own backyard. So these are ones that uh, most of us are familiar with and can relate to. So Tom's, Tom's is a, a footwear brand. Okay, so they have built their brand around uh, this belief in a future where all people have a chance to thrive. So I believe that for every shoe they make, a third of that turns back to people in, in third world countries. And then they create, so that's what they, that's the business model, but then they craft stories and content that are based on on this message, on building a community. And keep using the word community because that's what it is. It's a community of people who believe in the same cause, who want to make a difference in that way, who value the change that this brand is making. So they want to be a part of it. Another another one you might be familiar with is an Australian brand, which is Thank You. Uh, you see it in a lot of um, bathrooms these days. But they Thank You, who provides um, clean, uh, what is it? Oh, I just had a mind blank. Like shampoos and soaps and. Um, the likes of that. They're, what they stand for is they want to change the world. You know, they want to remove the, the different systems that are, are toxic to culture, as such. So their mantra is to change the world. We must change the system, and that's the mission that they're on to do that. Uh, so any of their products, you know, they're using clean uh, content uh, ingredients in their in their products. Um, that kind of thing. So they, you can see that they've created something that is a platform for them to create content around, to create compelling storytelling that, as I keep saying, connects with the people that believe in that same thing, who that matters to. So they're really big brands, okay? How does this apply to smaller brands? You know, it doesn't have to be. We're not always changing the world. And I, I just want to make that clear. Like, I don't mean that everybody has to have a cause that they stand for and that's the only thing that their business can be around. But we are moving into more purpose-based businesses. And that's what people are re resonating with. But here's another example, wonky wear. So these wonky wear... Um, create pottery goods, homewares, uh, and they're a South African company. Uh, and you know, on, you go to their website and they tell you they employ, train and support people from the local community, especially those from disadvantaged backgrounds. So you know, that's really impactful. And then the stories that they tell, even you know, around their pottery and that, it's all about these stories these, of these real life people who 
their lives are changing for the better as a result of this one organisation. So can you see, before I move on, can you see how the, the power of impact and how you can craft stories around this and can you see how that can apply to your business? I'll put my microphone down, it's getting heavy. Yeah, definitely awesome. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really just shifting the way that we think about what we're doing online. Really, you know, it's taking away the whole technical side of it. It's like, you know, oh, I need to be on this and I need to be on that. And it's thinking about how you can provide value when you show up online. And the more that you do that, and I just will continually repeat this, the more that you do that, you build a community of people who will share your content on your behalf, who will want to create their own content supporting your brand as well. You know, you see it all the time if you're on any form of social media, people tagging a business in them, tag like because they've used the product or they're using the product or they've put some value out of uh, you know, the connection they've got with the, the brand and they want to share that. And this is how we, you know, we're creating leads. It's so organic that it's no longer about, uh, you know, it's no longer so clinical, I suppose is the word I'm after. It becomes this expansion of our, of our business that, well, I don't know, I think it's quite fun personally. Yeah, I think it's really moving. And for me, whenever I work with different businesses on the ground, and it's interesting because I do, I work with lots of businesses uh, who want to be online, they want to understand how they can you know, get the followers that all these other businesses have, or that they think that they have. They want to know how to do this, they can give some magic tricks, but really what it is, it's about invoking an, an emotion of response in people through your story. I had one person that I was working with uh, who was really, really disheartened. Uh, they were like, I can't do this anymore, I'm going to shut this business down. It's just, you know, I'm not getting any results. Everything I do is just a waste. So I don't see the point in doing this. And we started talking through that. It's like, tell me about why you started this in the first place. And, you know, as we, she first started talking, she was like, oh, I don't know, I just wanted to do this. And I was like, well, why did you want to do that? What caused that? And she's like, well, because of this and this and this. And then the more we talked, the more her passion for what she was doing, the reason that she started this in the first place, the motivation, the meaning, the impact that she wanted to have, which she'd lost sight of, because, you know, she felt like everything wasn't working. Within half an hour, she had sparked that passion that she had again, and she's like, right, yeah, this is it. So it's like, okay, let's write this down, because this is the start. This is where we build our story from. This is what our brand is about. And we can easily create content when we know what our brand is about. So I just want to touch on a couple of things of knowing your brand first, uh, because further on from the point I just made, getting really clear on who your brand is, is the starting point. And again, if you look at anyone who does it well, any business or brand that you might follow, you know, they're really consistent with their branding. They've got a really good idea of who they are. Now this isn't an exercise on branding, so I won't go into too much detail, I just want to outline these few points of understanding your brand identity. If you don't have this established in your business, or if you're not really, if you've been around for a while and you know you just haven't got clear on this, perhaps go back to it. Uh, we run various workshops on branding as well through Business Station, so you can definitely jump into one of those. Um, but it's just really, really essential that you understand who your brand is before you start on the journey of storytelling. Um, so things like how, 
have I been picked up? Uh, can you let me know if you can still see me? Oh, not perhaps see me, but. Okay, so some things to think about. It's, you know, more, your brand is more than your logo. Uh, it's definitely a part of it, but it's more than that. So it's things that represent you, the cut, different colours that you use, the font that you use in any of your social posts or uh, any marketing collateral you have, even on your website, those things matter. Your style of photography and videography matters as well. If you use illustrations and graphics within your branding, you know, um, what do they look like? How are they a representation of your brand? They definitely matter. But what I really want to talk about and get you clear on is understanding your language that you use in your brand and the tone of voice that you use as well. This is really, really important. Uh, you'll notice, you know, um, a really good example is just what we're doing here. This is pretty casual, pretty friendly. Um, and this is how I show up with my customers, uh, the whole formal professional, even though I still try to maintain a level of professionalism. It's very, very light. So you think about that, how that applies to you. And then that also helps shape how you talk to people. Um, and the style of writing that you use when you're talking to people as well. Uh, so that's really important. And then also the messaging from there. So what is the messaging that you're using within your brand? So they're really just so, so integral. Yeah, how do you want that messaging portrayed? And this is a, I think this is really important because one of the things that we still tend to do is think that we do need to be super formal and super, uh, we maintain a level of like third person in our communications. So, uh, you know, if it's on a website, we're talking, definitely talking third person, you know, very, very formal. This is what our company's about. This is what we represent. Um, where if we go back to thinking about, well, we're do doing business with people. We want to put the human touch into all our correspondence. This is what will allow us to connect with our customers, our people. The other thing that's really important before you start with is knowing customers. And remember I said earlier that they think that it's uh, and potentially yes, everyone has the capability of doing business, but it starts off with knowing who that first person is who will love what you from the region. Um, that's your ideal customer. That's the person that you need to get a really clear picture in your mind who that is. Right, losing any time. How we right now have you got me back again? What about now? Okay, good. Sorry about this. It will be rectified at some point. Okay, so yeah, knowing who your customer is, uh, and this is the base or the foundation of any work that I do all the time, the, the branding and the customer. And even if I work with a uh, customer who wants to me a website, and I'm using the word customer, it's so ingrained in me. I want to take it away from my language. Um, anyone I work with who wants a new website, we always go back to these basics before we even start the website. Uh, if they've got a, a brand style guide, we work from that. Uh, but if they don't, we redevelop the brand. We look at those core parts that I was sharing earlier, like of the brand identity. Uh, we might not go into the full 
suite of what one would get if they um, bought a branding package, but we definitely reevaluate what that brand is, what it stands for, what the message is that they're trying to convey, uh, because it's just foundational. And then we look at who the customer is. We get really clear on this as well, because it just um, defines everything we do moving forward. So just some basic tips for yourself is who is who's completely gone. Okay, so knowing who your customer is, uh, who they are, what are their interests? <laughs> Thank you. Um, if you can see the chat, I appreciate that, Izzy. Thank you. Woman after my own heart in marketing, I love it. Okay, uh, what problems can you solve? Yeah, what problems can your business, your brand, solve? for the person who is your ideal client, your ideal customer. Uh, what's their biggest pain point and how do you resolve that for them in what you provide? And the other thing that I want you to think about is where do they hang out online the most? Now, this is so important, I think, and this is, oops, this uh, goes against what most other marketers will tell you. They will tell you that you have to be on every single channel and you just have to, you know, be on Facebook, be on Instagram, be on TikTok, be on LinkedIn, be on YouTube, start a podcast, write a book, do all of these things. It's really, really overwhelming for a business owner who just wants to do business. Uh, so I disagree with that because I, I think we need to know where our customers hang out the most. And this is our ideal customer. Um, and our content that we, when we're doing storytelling, is tailored towards those people that are hanging out on that platform. Um, and once, so let's just use Instagram as an example, okay? So if we go, okay, that's where most of my customers are, or the people that know and love me, that's where they hang out, I know this. Uh, so I'm going to make that my main channel. And I'm going to get good at posting posts. I'm going to learn how to do reels. I'm going to learn how to do stories. They're just three things I have to do without overwhelming having to figure out every other single channel. Okay, and when we can get comfortable with using that channel, and we can build a community on that channel as well, uh, we can then start to look at incorporating other channels. One of the things with Facebook and Instagram is there, you know, same company, you can build your community on Instagram and share content to Facebook if you like, uh, so you've got that without adding additional work. But it really, that's what I think is, is fundamental, is choosing a channel where your customers hang out the most. You might want to do podcasting and blogs and all the other things as well, um, but start with one. And start with the one where most you know your customers are hanging out. Um, and I don't know, I'm just going to put it out there. I don't even use Facebook anymore for my for personal use. Um, and not to say that it's not for everyone. I have a lot of businesses that I work with that do have great success using Facebook. Um, but it's no longer a channel. It's no longer a social platform that I enjoy using. So I just don't use it from a business sense. So if someone like me was identified as your target audience, uh, or your ideal client, your ideal person, and all of your marketing or most of your marketing was done through Facebook, then I wouldn't be there to build that community with. So knowing who your customer is, where they're hanging out, and building your content around the platform that you're using so it's easy for people to engage with and want to engage with. And want to share as well. And then also from our socials, the website experience must match the expectation. And by that, what I mean is 
you created a brand persona for yourself through your storytelling, through how you're showing up, through the social channel that you choose to be on, um, how you interact with them. When they go to the website, they want to ensure that they're getting the same experience that they've gotten elsewhere. A really good, ex I, I'm going to use an example, I won't say the name, but it was a particular um, organic chocolate brand. This was quite a few years ago, maybe three or four years ago now. Um, their packaging was so on point. When you, you know, you purchased their, the chocolate, uh, the packaging told a little story inside about what the brand was about, uh, the feel, the texture, everything about the packaging was just like, oh, I just want to be a part of this, you know. Um, it just it invoked a great res response. And then you, when you went to the website, the website was really cold and sterile compared to the packaging, which was really natural, organic, it just really, you know, felt earthy, where the website didn't have that feel at all. So, the, and this is where the branding is important as well, like all of these things matter. Um, it told this beautiful story, uh, which you wanted to know, you wanted to read more of this, you know, uh, but you couldn't find any of that on the website. So you want to make sure that it all matches, it all works in harmony together, so that when people do get onto the website, because this is where they're going to convert, really, um, is through the website. So you want to make sure that it, they're going to get exactly what they have expected from all their other interactions with you. And there's various ways you can do that on the website. Obviously, making sure your branding is on point. Um, so the the um, it's synergized across all the different channels that they've engaged with you on. You want to make sure that's there. But also having those touch points of interaction with your customers as well uh, through your website. So remembering that your website doesn't just have to be a static informational brochure. This is where people will convert. This is where they will transact with you. So you want to ensure that they can do that easily. And when they do it, they're getting the same voice, the same messaging, the same tone, all of those things that they've gotten everywhere else. Um, and there's different ways that you can do this, which I have another webinar where I go into detail about this. This is actually creating a virtual shopping experience online or a virtual experience online, essentially, where you're engaging in real time with, with the people on your website, uh, keeping that interaction authentic as well. And you might, I don't think I've included it here, and I'm running out of time, so I won't go into it in too much detail, but basically we've got so many, um, with the technology is there for us now that we're able to take a static website and turn it into something really interactive and engaging. We can do that through video online as well, or on our website as well, so it's not just video, it's not just for your social channels or YouTube or whatever. You know, we can bring products to life through using video. And this is something that we'll see more and more of. Um, we can interact through uh, live chat and the likes of that uh, with our customers when they're there on the website. Uh, we can do that using chatbots, you know, if we don't want to be answering messages at 3 a.m. in the morning. Uh, we can set those up, but which we create to emulate our tone, our language, our messaging, and answer, you know, frequently asked questions, essentially. We can do that. Uh, but we can also interact in real time with them as well through live chat. Uh, and we can also, you know, there used to be a time with our website, uh, and again, I won't go into it too much because I do have another webinar dedicated exactly to this, but you know, when we go, we've designed websites where if you want more information, you have to fill out a form, you have to prove you're not a robot, and then you get sent a confirmation email um, 
or you don't get sent a confirmation email. And then when the person is free and available, they'll get back to you in answer to your response. Uh, that's the only way that we can contact the business. Or if we're purchasing a product, we just you know add to cart, make the purchase, and off we go. And we've taken that to new levels now, where you know through these live chat options, we can get we can ask if people would want to hear from us further uh, and grab their phone number or their email from them. So we limit the the sale funnel essentially or the user journey from people being able to engage with us. So we're talking to them in real time. We can grab their phone number, uh, you know, and we're like, hey, if, if you want to know when this product's back in stock, uh, we can let you know. Just give us your phone number. Obviously, you'd word that in a way that was appropriate, and uh, we'll let you know as soon as it comes back in. So things like that, these are ways that you can create that customer experience where people are like, yeah, I want, this is awesome. I want to keep doing business with this business because they make me feel like a person. They make me feel like I matter as opposed to just a, you know, a, a number on the website essentially. So it really takes our interactions with our customers from being passive, which is how it's traditionally been with websites, to being really active and being really, yeah, like just making the buying decision so much easier. And you'll see also on the web, on websites that continue the expectation of what they've had off site to on site as well is that it's not just about having products or services that they can buy, um, but you know, including these impact stories on the site as well. And that can be through video, through you know, written text, that kind of thing, through photos, through all of these things that we do on social media. It's all carried on on site as well. So there's no separation there. So that is a really high level look at how we can create customers and turn them into paying, how we can create leads and turn them into paying customers. Okay, so it's not so much about um, it, it's storytelling, I believe, is key to making that happen. And then using the emerging technology that is now available to us to take that storytelling to a level that makes it really, really personal with our customers. So thank you for bearing with me. I understand our technology has made it quite uh, difficult today, but I do appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know now. Thank you. Uh, so just before we log off, I'll just let you know about this uh, program that we are running here at Business Station, which is the digital solutions program I mentioned earlier. $44 gets you three hours face-to-face -face with a digital advisor, and we can talk to you about anything in regards to digital, social media, uh, webs websites, marketing strategy, all of those things. Uh, and then you also have access to a library of workshops and webinars that are done live and also provided um, recordings of as well. So thank you all for your time. Thanks for bearing with this, this poor sound quality and also poor video quality. We've lost both throughout the course of this webinar. Uh, feel free to get in touch with me if you've got any questions. If you want more information on how you can apply storytelling to your business, um, you know, if you've got a mechanic shop or something like that, like everything I'm talking about, how does that fit with you? If you'd like more information, my email is Hayley, H-A-Y-L-E-Y, -E at businessstation.com.au, and I'm happy to talk to you about that, about applying it to your specific business or industry. So thank you. Now you won't be able to see me at all, but uh, yeah, thanks for joining me, and I will see you next time on another webinar about digital marketing.